Uh, hey everybody, it's JC, Managing Partner, Fast Performance, um, and today we're going to be experimenting with the Cool Mint. Um, the guys at Cool Mint were nice enough to send this to us, um, and uh, what we're going to do, the idea is it's supposed to be able to lower your body temperature, uh, to a certain extent lower your perception of, of workload from what I understand. So here's how we're going to test it today. I'm on a watt bike nucleus, which we use here in the lab uh, for our metabolic testing and training. Um, utilizing the Trader Road app. And as you can see today, the workout that I have is interval based, slightly above FTP for each one of those intervals. And, uh, and then I also have a core temperature sensor connected to my body. And the app is live right in front of us which is going to give me some data as far as my actual core temperature. But most importantly, I'm looking to find out if the cool mitt is going to lower my rate of perceived exertion in between these interval bouts. So the idea is I'm going to go through my first interval bout, and uh, that's going to be at about 22 minutes uh, without the cool mitt. And then for the last three interval bouts, I will be utilizing the cool mitt uh, in between my intervals when I'm in my recovery stage. So that's what we got, and uh, I'll be checking back in with you shortly. In my first interval, RPE is about 8, 172 beats per minute. Body temperature is registering at 100.7. A little bit of trouble talking. We're done with the interval in about a minute and 30, and I'm going to put the cool mitt on. See you then. Okay, interval's done. It's about 178 beats per minute. Body temp is almost at 101. Now the mitt's going on. And my plan is to wear the mitt pretty much almost all the way through this recovery interval until I'm about 10 second shy of my next VO2 interval. Okay, we're getting near the end of my first recovery interval. Cool mitts have been on the whole time. My hand's cold. <laughs> um, body temp, <coughs> the internal body temp still going up a little bit, um, but it feels good. It's hard for me to tell whether I'm fully recovered. I'll tell you in about two minutes. Okay. Got a minute 45 left for this four minute interval. Felt good. Right out of the gate. You see I had some spikes. Holding sustainable wattage. Certainly feels a little easier even though my body temp is steadily climbing. Now it's starting to hurt. Got about a minute left, a little over that. Check back in with you in a minute. Okay, so we're into the next recovery interval. 
heart rate touched 180 during that interval. And I felt better than I did in the first one. I mean, argument could be made. That was my first interval of the day. So of course that's gonna suck a little bit. This last one felt like I was a steady seven all the way through. Even when it started to hurt a little bit, it didn't hurt that bad. So I think the proof is gonna be these last two. See what my RPE is there and and uh, how I feel, you know, near the end of my recovery intervals. So check back in with you in two minutes. Okay, we're getting near the end of my second recovery interval. 20 seconds left to go. My internal body temp is steadily climbing. I'm at 102.2. Probably hit my threshold at 102.8 before the day's over. But interesting side note, it's easier to get my heart rate down, which might be a side effect of this. I don't know. But here we go. The next third interval. Feel really good. Mark is about an eight, but it feels sustainable. A minute 30 to go. Body temps up to 102.5. Got to quit talking. <laughs> That's the third interval. Body temps up to 102.7. My temperature test that I ran a couple months ago puts me at an internal body temp of 102.8 according to that tech. Probably gonna push through that, but we'll see. I can tell you my my second to last recovery block. It kind of feels good to put this thing on. <laughs> okay, second to last recovery interval. About to go into my last above FTP interval. Heart rate's not coming down as fast, but I still feel good. My body temp is at 102.9, so I'm over my threshold already. So we will uh, see how this one goes. in the last interval. Body tension 103.1. Definitely tough. Cranking lots. A little all over the place. I'm hanging in God. Heart rate, 185 beats per minute. Now, I got my core temperature out of the water, 103.2. And as you can see, even though it's a little all over the place, my last interval had the highest wattage output, probably by two or three RPMs. Had to go dark in that last one though. No. All right, gloves going back on. And I'm in recovery mode for 10 minutes. See you in five. Okay, so I'm in recovery now. Got about five minutes left. Forgot to mention RPA on the last stage was nine, but my power was up and I exceeded what the core app told me was my temperature threshold. Of 2.8. Um, I was definitely cranking more watts out at the end. It felt good, even though I had to kind of bury myself. Another uh, interesting side effect by wearing it for more than that four-minute recovery interval is my heart rate 
talking, of course, when my heart rate's up, but my heart rate at one point was down to 133 beats per minute, which is not that high over my initial block during warm-up. So I don't know if that is a side effect of the cool net or <laughs> my training. <laughs> Could be any number of things. But I definitely felt stronger during a four minute interval than I usually do. Um, and I would say that overall, if I had to put that workout on a scale of one to 10, including the recovery blocks, give it about a seven. A uh, pretty fair argument could be made that if I had done it without the mitt, it'd be around an eight. So we're going to take a look at this now. Um, I was an hour long interval workout. Um, I think it's safe to say that my RPE differed uh, quite substantially over my, my core app information where um, when I did my temperature test earlier in the summer uh, when I was getting you know close to riding outdoors I found that I was unable to crank out watts above about 102.8 now I'm looking at this temperature sensor and near the end of the workout in my last interval I was up to 103.5, 103.6 and I was actually cranking out more watts. Um, and I felt good. Um, I think the one thing that I mentioned to Joel when we were talking about this is, is that um, the piece that I noticed is the sustainability of it uh, for each one of, of my blocks. So you can kind of notice that like at the beginning of each one of the blocks, like when I was actually using it, where I didn't use it in the first one, it's kind of all over the place. Second one, it was pretty sustainable and I felt pretty good. Third one, I came out of the gate really hot and then it fell off. And the same with the fourth one, which arguably were the two hardest intervals, my last two. So my short sort of non-professional uh, analysis of this is it definitely made me feel good immediately for like it carried over an effect for like a minute two minutes um but not much further than that um and that could have been me uh at 54 years old six foot 180 um <laughs> uh, an aspire a, a former broken strength and power athlete trying to be an endurance athlete but i think there was certainly an effect um what that effect was it was hard for me to determine but we're going to run more testing on this and uh and uh see how it goes. But once again, thank you to the guys from CoolMit uh, for sending us uh, this uh, device to test. And obviously our friends at Watt Bike, Trainer Road, and Core. Um, we'll be back with another round.